Why do you think massive companies like IBM, GitLab, and BMW are using Nest.js? Nest.js popularity exploded because it solves a critical challenge that other frameworks don't. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's special about Nest.js architecture, why top companies choose it, and how it makes your development simpler and more efficient. If you need a wardrobe, would you rather buy an IKEA one or buy the raw material and build it yourself? I would 100% buy the IKEA one because I know that it will come with a simple plan and all I have to do is follow it and get a nice wardrobe. Nest.js is exactly the same. It gives you a simple plan to build your application. And the plan is as follow. You create a module, you add a controller classes in the module to handle incoming requests, then you add service classes in the module to handle business logic, and you add repository classes to handle data access. If you follow the plan, you'll have a nicely organized application. And that's one of the major appeal of Nest.js. Without even realizing, you're using one of the most popular software architecture patterns. But what's that architecture and why is it so good? If we take a step back and look at how Nest.js wants us to build our application, we'll notice a few interesting things. By creating classes that have specific roles and by defining how those classes interact, we've actually split our application into different layers. The controllers layer, which is responsible for interaction with the outside world. The services layer, which is responsible for the business logic. And the controller layer will use the service layer to get the data it needs to respond to the request. And finally, we have the data layer, which is responsible for reading and writing data in the database. This is a very common and popular software architecture, which is called the layered architecture. The number of layers and the name might vary, but the three that we've just seen here are extremely common. We have layers, but why is that a good thing? So why don't we just write controllers that have all the business logic and can access the database directly? Once you've built your IKEA wardrobe, you won't just throw all your clothes inside randomly. You would most likely pick a space for each type of clothing. The layered architecture follows the exact same principle. It forces you to clearly separate your application and assign a purpose to each part. So this is what we call the separation of concerns. But why is separation of concerns a good thing? So first of all, it makes your code easier to understand because when you search for something, you know exactly where to look and it makes your code easier to maintain. So let's say you want to change how you return errors in your controller you only need to change the code inside the controller layer. Thanks to the layer clear separation, changes in one layer don't affect other layers. And lastly, because each layer is independent, you can test each layer in isolation. But there is a highly underrated advantage of layered architecture. Let's get back to our wardrobe. I can very easily explain how I organize my clothes in my wardrobe. T-shirt in one place, jumpers, trousers, underwear. Very simple. In the same way, the layered architecture is actually an easy concept to understand, which makes it the perfect starting point for most applications. But is that architecture too simplistic for large applications? Once you've built a few pieces of furniture from IKEA, you start to notice a pattern. So the instructions may change slightly, but the system always remains the same and you can almost predict what the next step is going to be. It's the same thing with Nest.js because Nest.js uses proven and popular patterns that are used in enterprise applications. If you've worked on large systems before, Nest.js will feel very familiar. Java and C Sharp, which are two of the most widely used languages in enterprise environments, have one thing in common. They are both strongly typed languages. And it's no surprise that Nest.js embraces type safety by being a TypeScript first framework. If you appreciate the insight on this channel and you are serious about mastering Nest.js, I highly recommend checking out my course, Build Production Grade Nest.js Applications. Inside, I'll walk you through the exact system senior backend engineers use to build robust, scalable Nest.js applications. You'll get actionable advice on which patterns to use and when to use them, 
and I'll personally answer your questions in the course community. You can click the link in the description to join the course. Nest.js also requires you to use dependency injection to structure relationships between classes. This is a battle-tested pattern that not only improves flexibility, but also makes your code easier to test. And if you come from a Java background and you see some Nest.js code, let's say you build an API that exposes user's endpoint. You typically have a user's controller class, a user's service class, and a user's repository. If you want to add new endpoints for dealing with orders, you'll have to create new classes with a orders controller, order service, and orders repository. But the two domains don't belong together, right? So to separate those two domains in Nest.js, you put each domain in a different module. And this gives you a clear separation between the two domains. This modular structure allows you to combine layered architecture with vertical slices architecture. So this is a very powerful combo that makes Nest.js flexible and scalable. But modules allow much more than that. So let me give you some examples of how modules can actually be used in Nest.js. You can use the factory pattern to dynamically generate modules based on configuration. You can create dependencies between module and under the hood, Nest.js will use the singleton pattern to reuse the same class instances at runtime, which reduces the resources used by your application. You can use abstract modules to create contracts that other modules can implement and the list goes on. When you master these patterns, you can even go beyond the default architecture and implement hexagonal architecture, for example, if your project needs it. That's what makes Nest.js so attractive for large-scale enterprise applications. So Nest.js very strongly encourages you to use these patterns even without you realizing it. When you hear all of this, you might feel like Nest.js is imposing a lot of things with all these patterns and rigid rules. And you might say that as engineers, are we not supposed to craft bespoke solutions for solving unique problems we have? So let me show you why those constraints can actually be something beneficial for us. So imagine building with Lego or building with clay. So clay gives you nearly endless freedom, but it also requires a lot of skills, time and experience. With Lego, you are very limited in what you can build, so you can't shape it exactly how you want, but almost anyone can follow the instructions and get a decent result quite fast. So now I'm going to ask you to put yourself in the shoes of a CEO or a CTO. On one side, you have a solution that requires high skills, time and creativity, but you might be able to build more or less whatever you want, however you want. And on the other side, you have a solution that is easy to use, fast and safe, but you are limited in what you can build and how you can build it. Which one would you choose? Even if both have pros and cons, I think that we can all agree that in an enterprise environment, the Lego approach is extremely appealing. But this isn't just about business. Choosing an opinionated framework can also improve engineering efficiency. Now try to imagine a meeting room with 10 software engineers trying to agree on one technical solution. We've all been there and we all know how difficult those technical dis discussions can be and everyone has their own strong opinions and ego can get in the way. Knowing that, you can easily appreciate the value of an opinionated framework. So instead of a limitation, it can actually become a superpower for teams that want to spend more time building and less time debating. An opinionated framework gives team a shared foundation to build on. You have consistency across teams. You can onboard new developers or switch teams more easily. And you can even use the framework to enforce best practices. But here is the thing. A great architecture, battle-tested patterns, and consistency across teams still aren't enough on their own. A framework, no matter how powerful, isn't enough to build a successful application you also need the right tools and libraries to bring it all together. You can click on this next video to learn about the right packages you must use to build your Nest.js application, because even the most popular Node.js libraries might not be the best fit for your Nest.js app.